Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of the End of Days. With myself, Muhammad Tim Humble, we have finished reading as many hadith as Allah Azza wa made it easy for us to read from Sahih Muslim, from Kitab al Fitan, wa Ashrat al Sa'a, the chapter of tribulations and the signs of the hour. And we've come to this segment of the series where we're talking about the methodology of the Muslim in avoiding trials and tribulations. So what we spoke about last time, about the need for our emotions to be constrained by the limits of the Sharia. We also spoke about the need to move slowly and not to rush. And we spoke towards the end of the episode about the importance of referring to the major scholars in Islam. And that is because when the scholars disagree, and indeed when there is disagreement that you can't tell the difference between the right and the wrong, then this is the time when you have to stick to the major scholars and avoid the minor scholars who may be very well versed in Islam. They may be very honest people, very sincere people, may even have a great deal of knowledge in many things, but they don't quite have that seniority and that wisdom that comes with it to be able to guide you at times of trials and tribulations. So our fourth principle that we're going to deal with is that of sticking to the matter of seeking knowledge and being aware of the trials and tribulations and how they will come about. Ignorance is one of the biggest killers when it comes to trials and tribulations. It is a killer that kills you in your life and kills you in your religion. Ignorance is never ever praised by Allah Azza wa Jal. Anywhere in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no praise for ignorance. The only people who really fear Allah from among his slaves are the scholars, the people of knowledge. So knowledge is something which should always precede action in Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَأَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكْ Know that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. And then, after knowing, seek forgiveness for your sins. So seeking forgiveness for sins is something that comes about when we have knowledge first of all. Action comes after knowledge. And that is why Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih, before mentioning this ayah, he put it under the heading of the chapter that knowledge precedes statement and action. Before we speak, we have to have knowledge. Before we do something, we have to have knowledge. And this is never more true than in the issue of trials and tribulations that will lead up to the day of judgment. Subhanallah, all of these ahadith that we have heard, what is their purpose if it is not to give you knowledge and preparation for this time? The Prophet ﷺ said that every messenger, as we've heard in Sahih Muslim, every messenger warned his people about the Dajjal. Nuh warned his people about the Dajjal. But that the Prophet ﷺ would tell us more about the Dajjal than any other Prophet before him. And so subhanAllah, all of these ahadith are there to give us knowledge of these fitan and trials. Because when you're armed with knowledge, you have some armor that can protect you on the way. The enemies of Allah are going to come. They're going to attack the Muslims from all sides. Some of them will be shayateen from the men and the jinn that will attack the Muslims in their beliefs and in their feelings and in their aqidah, the things they believe about Allah Azza wa Jal. Some of them will attack the Muslims physically, some psychologically, some emotionally. We do not fear for the Muslims. Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. The plot of the shaytan is ever weak. Wallahi, we as individuals do not fear for the Muslims. But what we fear for is the Muslim that has no armor, no weaponry, nothing to protect themselves from this emotional, religious, psychological onslaught. They have nothing to protect themselves with. And so we want as Muslims to be protected. And the thing that protects us is knowledge. When we have the knowledge, we see the fitna coming from very far away. Some of the people of knowledge said, when a fitna comes, 
aqbalat kal mar'atil hasna it comes like a beautiful woman and when it leaves it leaves like an ugly old woman it comes like a beautiful young woman and it leaves like an ugly old woman the point is when you see the fitna coming you think this is something beautiful this is something amazing wow look at that and then when it goes you turn around and think i was deceived like the deception of somebody who looks at a person from far and thinks that this is a beautiful young woman but when it comes it seems to him that actually he was wrong and that actually this was an ugly and disfigured old woman that passed him and it was only a trick of his eyes that he saw it as a beautiful young woman so this is how some of the scholars of islam describe trials and tribulations the point is the more knowledge you have the more able you are to see those fitan for what they really are see those trials for what they really are look at the young man who comes to the dajjal the greatest of the martyrs in the sight of allah azza wa jalla he comes to the dajjal the dajjal does everything to him that he does including sawing him in half from the parting of his head to the parting of his legs and then he says to him after having brought him back to life by the decree of allah he says to him now do you believe that i am your lord and he says this has only increased me in insight now i'm even more aware that you are the dajjal why because he knew of the ahadith he knew about knowledge he knew the truth of what allah azza wa jalla and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said so knowledge keeps you safe at times of trials and tribulations knowledge is something that keeps you safe it makes you aware of what is going to come and it prepares you for that event that is going to come like we mentioned the example of the young man with regard to the dajjal and the fact that he was prepared likewise the minor trials and tribulations the minor signs that come when they come you recognize them for what they are and your knowledge makes you ready for them and prepared for them and you have an awareness of what is going to happen and what each sign means and that was the purpose of this series really the purpose of this end of day series as much as allah azza wa jalla made it easy for me despite my deficiencies and shortcomings allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever he made easy for me to tell you about the end of days the purpose of it was to give you the knowledge to be able to recognize these things when they happen to teach them to your children and to be able to protect yourselves from it through the knowledge of these matters and through knowing what is going to happen and knowing how to escape them all of this is given to you by the sunna and that's because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't leave any good except that he informed his ummah about it nor did he leave any evil except that he warned his ummah against it sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as hudayfa radiyallahu anhu said kana an-nas yas'aluna rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam an al-khair wa kuntu as'aluhu an al-sharr he said the people used to ask the prophet sallallahu about good and i used to ask him about evil out of a fear that i would come to see it or i would come to know it that it would approach me or catch me up so out of a fear that this evil would catch him hudayfa asked about the evil and learned about the evil not for the sake of evil not for the sake of doing evil but for the sake of knowing when evil is going to happen and when it comes not being fooled by its beauty in the first instance but realizing what it was before and this is of course a part of what the scholars of islam do and what the scholars of islam know without a shadow of a doubt this leads us to our next point or fifth point of benefit which is to stick to the sunna of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and these are all linked together so you have the virtue of knowledge the virtue of sticking to the scholars and the major scholars specifically at times of trials and tribulations when there is disagreement among the people of knowledge and then you have sticking to the sunna and avoiding everything which is newly invented in the religion and that is because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in an authentic hadith fa innahum man ya'ish minkum fa sayara ikhtilafan kathira the one who lives for a long time among you will see a great deal of differing fa alaykum bi sunnati so stick to my sunnah 
and the Sunnah of the Khulafa al Rashidin al Mahdiin, the rightly guided Khulafa who will come after me. Addu alayha bin nawajid. Bite onto it with your molar teeth. Wa iyakum wa muhtasat al umur. And stay away from newly invented matters, for every newly invented matter is innovation and every innovation is misguidance. The Sunnah, brothers and sisters, is the ship of safety. Whoever climbs aboard, the ship of the Sunnah will be saved, and whoever declines to stay aboard the Sunnah will be drowned. At times of trials and tribulations, the Prophet ﷺ specifically mentioned sticking to the Sunnah. The one who lives for a long time among you will see a great deal of differing. So much ikhtilaf, so much differing, so much trouble, so much fighting. So much trial, so many minor signs of the Day of Judgment, even the major signs of the Day of Judgment, you will come to see. So what should you do? When you see all of this differing, ikhtilaf, bid'ah, innovation, people saying this is right, this is wrong, this group saying they're right, and this group saying that they're wrong, what should you do? فَعَلَيْكُمْ sunnati. Stick to my sunnah. And the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, the example of the Sahaba, at the foremost of them, the Khulafa al-Rashidin, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum. We've already spoke about how the example of Ali and before him Abu Bakr is the most wonderful example of being patient in doing good deeds at times of trials. And we will speak about Umar, inshaAllah radiallahu ta'ala an. Umar who was the door that stopped the fitna from attacking the Muslims. We learn from each one of the Sahaba, from the Khulafa al Rashidin, tools in order to keep us firm at times of trials and tribulations. Look at how Umar blocked the plans of the Munafiqeen from every angle, such that he was described as a door, a closed door. In the hadith of Hudayfa, that between you and it, ma laka wa laha ya Amir al Mu'mineen. There is no concern for this with you, O Amir al Mu'mineen. Between you and it, there is a closed door. Bainaka wa bainaha babun mughlaq. Between you and it, there is a closed door. So between Umar and between the fitna, there was a closed door. This is the example of the benefit of following the example of the Sunnah, following the Prophet. Tuba lil ghuraba, paradise to the strangers, the ones who return to. The original Islam of the Prophet wasallam, not the new versions of Islam that appear every few years. Trials and tribulations are a tough time, brothers and sisters. They are a time in which people abandon the Sunnah. And indeed, we can say two things about trials and tribulations. We can say that they are a time when people abandon the Sunnah. And more than that, we can say they are caused by abandoning the Sunnah. When we abandon the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we bring upon ourselves trials and tribulations. We learnt the severity of disobeying the Prophet ﷺ from the example of the Battle of Uhud. When the Muslims were tried with a severe loss of life against an enemy that they had already defeated because they disobeyed a command from the commands of the Prophet ﷺ. When Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the Quran, Let there be a warning. Those people who oppose the command of the Prophet, lest they be afflicted with a trial. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, some of the scholars of tafsir said, Al fitnatu al shirk. The trial that they will be afflicted with is that they will make a partner with Allah or they be afflicted by a severe torment or a severe punishment. Allah Azza wa Jal has threatened either shirk, either they will fall into shirk or severe punishment. All of it because they oppose the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or they go against the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So much has happened since his death salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi so many people have proposed new beliefs new ideas new ways of praying new ways of fasting new ways of giving the zakah new ideas and innovated and misguided concepts if we follow even one or two of these 
The danger is that first of all, they will bring upon this ummah the trials that we are so dreading. And secondly, we will not be saved because Allah Azza wa Jal threatened the one who does this with either that they will fall into shirk, i.e. when the Dajjal comes, they will worship the Dajjal instead of Allah. When the trials come, they will go back to worshipping idols instead of worshipping Allah. Or they will fall into aspects of shirk and die upon it, or a severe torment. And it doesn't sound like the one who is put into a severe torment is the one who has escaped the minor signs or the major signs of the Day of Judgment. Rather, the severe torment is the one who has been afflicted by them and the one who has not been saved and has not been successful. So in all of this, we are commanded to stick closely and firmly to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah azza wa jal commands us this in so many parts of the Qur'an. وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا Whatever the messenger gives you, take it. Whatever he forbids you from, abstain from it. There is nothing that was good except the Prophet ﷺ told us how to achieve it. There is no part of the religion that is incomplete. الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ Today I have completed your religion for you and completed my favor upon you and chosen for you Islam as your religion. Subhanallah. Islam has been chosen for us and it is complete. There is nothing else to be added. Al-Imam Malik Rahimahullah Ta'ala said, whoever imagines there is such a thing in Islam as a bid'ah which is hasana, a bid'ah which is good, has accused the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of betraying the trust that he was given. And that is because Allah Azza wa Jal says, today I have completed your religion for you and completed my favor upon you and chosen for you Islam as your religion. Imam Malik said, Rahimahullah, so what was not religion on that day will not be part of religion today. Newly invented practices, newly invented ways, these are a huge danger to us. They're a danger to us in our aqidah, in what we believe. Because people come and tell you things about the signs of the Day of Judgment that are misguided, that are not true. And so you don't recognize them. Like those people who said the Dajjal is a system or a government or a secret organization and it's not a person. What does this do to an individual? What it does is it prepares the people for the Dajjal. Wallah, the people who say this are greater helpers of the Dajjal in our time than perhaps anyone else. Because they remove the knowledge of the Dajjal from the Muslims, that he is a person who will walk on the earth and say instead he is a system that already exists, or he is the television, the one eye, and so on and so forth. All of these are designed to help the Dajjal in coming, because the people will not recognize him when he comes. Abandoning the Sunnah, coming up with these kinds of innovations and innovative beliefs and thoughts, leads the people away from the truth. And not following the Sunnah, leads to these trials coming. And not following the sunnah leads to not being given success to get through these trials and tribulations. How many people try to get through problems, try to get through trials and tribulations, but they can't survive them because they have abandoned the sunnah. And they make dua and Allah Azza wa does not accept their dua. But there is something even more serious in not following the sunnah, brothers and sisters. Something even worse than everything I've mentioned in this episode so far. And that is what will happen to you when you die, having not followed the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Brothers and sisters, all of us are going to die. Perhaps in a fitna, perhaps in a natural way, perhaps defending Islam and defending the religion of Islam, perhaps with so something so simple as a medical condition or an illness. Allah knows best, but there's one thing that is certain, all of us are going to die. And if all of us are going to die, then the question is, what do we die upon? Al-amalu bil khawatib. Your actions are judged according to the end of those actions. How they end up, how do you end up, how do you die? So imagine that you don't die upon the sunnah. And then when the Prophet ﷺ is at his haut, and he is giving out at his pool a drink from which if you take it from him and drink, you will never be thirsty again. And then there comes a people and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ummati, Ummati. In another wording, Ashabi, Ashabi. My companions, my companions. So he says, my Ummah, my Ummah. I.e. these are a people I recognize. These are Muslims. You know, welcome, come, come and drink from me. 
and then a barrier is placed between him and between them. Then he asks about this barrier. And then they say, you do not know what these people changed after you. So the Prophet ﷺ says, Suhkan, suhkan liman ba'di. Get out of my sight. Get out of my sight. The one who changed something after me. So subhanallah, what does this tell us about the person who dies without following the sunnah? That on the day of judgment, they will not drink from the hand of the Prophet ﷺ. They will not drink from the hawt. A group of them will go to Jahannam because of what they changed from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And in this we repeat the warning of Allah that they will fall into shirk. There will be a group of people who go against the sunnah. And because they go against the sunnah, they will fall into shirk. So there are huge, huge dangers in these trials and tribulations if we don't stick to the sunnah, if we don't follow the sunnah. Dangers in bringing the trials about and making them happen to us. Dangers in not surviving them. Dangers in dying upon shirk. And dangers in not receiving the blessings of the drink from the hand of the Prophet ﷺ in the hereafter. All of them because of not following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So for certain from the methodology of the Muslim in these times and these circumstances is that they must follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in times of ease so that Allah makes it easy for them to follow them in times of hardship. And especially when they see these trials and tribulations happening. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي Stick to the sunnah of the Prophet That's all we have time for in this episode. And until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.